Gaming Gamer here, and well, you probably already saw the title of the video, but first, I have to do the introduction for the series. So here we go. Welcome to Let's Say, where instead of playing the game, I actually talk about it. So in this episode of Let's Say, I'm going to be talking about why Aloy sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because it's already 4.0. And no one is using Aloy. Yeah, even in 3.0, no one is using Aloy. I wonder why. So, uh, well, wonder no longer. Because we are gonna be talking about why Aloy sucks and we're gonna go into greater detail as to why people don't use her anymore. So, without well, any further ado, it is time to talk about, uh, Aloy. First off, I am gonna be talking about her role in the game, so let's just talk about that. So, what is Aloy's role in this game? Well, there is only two options, because the other options are pretty bad, and you probably will never run her on anything. So, you can run her as a support, which is bad because her kit does not allow her to be a support, as you can see here. Her talents simply do not want her to be a support, because all of these effects only benefit her and not her teammates. So yeah. Uh, the second option is a sub DPS where she can only use her E and Q. This is pretty much one of her best uh, options because you never use her normal attacks. Her E does okay damage and her Q does okay damage too. So you could probably make her a sub DPS like Amber. Or the best option for her is to make her a DPS, which is basically her best role ever. You see the problem here? She only gets assigned to one role, which is main DPS. Sub DPS is okay, but she gets replaced by other sub DPSs out there who are better than her, like Rosaria. Rosaria is a better sub DPS than her. So you literally only have one option for her. And that option is to make her a DPS. The thing is, though, she sucks as a DPS, and I am going to be talking about that now. So, here we go. Here is why Aloy can not be a really good character. Alright, so, as you probably already saw on the transition, uh, well, we're going to be talking about her kit. But... Uh, I am going to be putting up a disclaimer here, uh, just in case. Aloy is still not that bad. It's just that compared to every other character on the whole roster, she just does not compare to other characters. So, you can make her work. It's just that, well, why bother? <laughs> and you'll probably see why once I talk about her talents. So, here we go. Her normal attack is your basic archer normal attack you'll never ever use this but as you see later there is a reason why you would want to use her normal attacks and we're going to be talking about that right now which is her elemental skill so our elemental skill is when she throws a cryo bomb which does cryo damage and it scatters little bombs on the floor so think of it as klee's uh elemental skill where she uh scatters bombs all over the place and if the opponents get hit by the bombs, she will gain a coil stack. And as long as the enemy gets hit four times on her elemental skill, so you could just use her elemental skill and then the enemies walk into the bombs three times to get four coil stacks, you will get a rushing ice state, which basically allows you to deal cryo-infused normal attacks. There's just one problem with this though. The cooldown sucks. And the duration of the rushing ice state sucks too. So, why does it suck? Because her cooldown is 20 seconds. You know how long 20 seconds is? It's a really, really long time. And considering the fact that Spiral Abyss is in a 3 minute time limit, 20 seconds is a lot of time. Yeah, you do not want to be affording to waste time on Abysses. So yeah, this cooldown just sucks. And a rushing ice state doesn't last long either because once it's over, you're stuck with a 10 second cooldown on her elemental skill in order for her to gain 4 stacks again. And even that, 
rubbing further salt on the wounds, you're not even guaranteed to get your coil stacks anyway. And I will be showcasing that on her uh, Abyss showcase. So yeah, you're not even guaranteed to get your coil stacks because enemies could simply just not walk into the bombs. That simple. <laughs> or your bombs uh, do not hit anyone and you get only one coil stack. I will give it this though. You keep your coil stacks. Yeah, you keep your coil stacks. It's just that the problem is... The cooldown sucks! So if you use your elemental skill and you only get like two coil stacks, you have to wait 20 seconds just to get your coil stacks again uh, when you throw your elemental skill. It just sucks. It's terrible. Basically, it is a 20 second skill for 10 seconds. It's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. You're wasting 20 seconds to get 10 seconds of damage. While your other characters can probably just do damage anyway by the time she gets her elemental skill. She can, they can even triple the damage, two times the damage, double the damage, anything! Anything! <laughs> Basically beats this. Yeah, it, it's just it's just so bad. Really, really bad. Her burst is okay. And the reason why it's okay is because you can actually spam it. As long as you have an energy recharge on it. So... Um, here's the, uh, reason why. It's because her energy crust is 40. And her skill damage is not that bad. Um, it does 500 damage, or 500% on a level 6. That's actually not that bad. Uh, the only problem is, though, is that she kind of sucks at using, uh, her burst too. Because there are other cryo DPSs out there and cryo supports that basically give more benefit on her, uh, on their Qs than Aloy does. All Aloy's is is a big damage Q. Yeah, so you can see the reason why you want to run her as a DPS. It's because she's meant to be run as a DPS. You can't run her as a sub because of her talents. Yeah, what a perfect segue. <laughs> so, when she gets a coil effect on her Frozen Wilds, she gets a 60% attack boost while other party members get 8%. So you can run her as a sub DPS, but there's no reason you would ever run this because 16% is basically double that of 8%. So, uh, why run her as a sub when you can run her as a main if she gets 16% attack? Yeah, it's pretty pointless <laughs> to put the 8%. It's because Aloy is meant to be a DPS. Again, I will keep hammering this over and over again. Her kit is meant to be a DPS, but she just sucks at it. It's, be it's be just because of her elemental skill. If they fix this into being, what, a 10 second cooldown instead of a 20 second one, she would actually be pretty decent. But nope, they have to make her uh, elemental skill pretty bad. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, now it's time to go over her passive talent, her other passive talent, which is Strong Strike. When she's in the rushing ice state, she will gain 3.5% cryo damage bonus every second. And you get a max of 35% uh, at the last minute or second. So, this means that if you ever want her to do the max amount of damage possible, you have to fire off everything at the last second of her rushing ice state. Which means that, well, you have to play her in a certain way, while other characters you don't have to. So yeah, uh, she basically forces you to adapt to her playstyle. Which is not that bad. I mean, you can basically time your elemental burst to basically uh, always be the last second on her um, rushing ice state. The only problem is that there are other characters out there that basically give them better reward than uh, basically this. So yeah, uh, her talent is not that great either. <laughs> yeah, her kit's just terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. And speaking of kit, I will be talking about everything else. So yeah. Constellations. She has nothing. Yeah. All her constellations is the same flavor text. So, meaning that, she will never get constellations, meaning that she'll never be good. At least other characters out there at least have constellations to make them somewhat good. But Aloy has nothing. So, what you see is what you get. Literally. <laughs> and as for her weapon choices, 
there is literally only three options for her, and they're not really that great either. So, first off is the string list. This is only if you ever want your Aloy to be a sub DPS. The reason why is because her elemental skill and burst damage will be increased by 24% um, if it is R1, and if it's R5, it gets boosted by uh, 48%. So, yeah. Uh, you ever want to use this for, well, sub DPS Aloy? But since her kit does not allow her to do that, you are now stuck with two options. So first off is the Sack Bow, which is mainly a support bow. So this is probably off the table too, but the only reason why you would ever run the Sack Bow is because of the 80% chance of a uh, elemental skill cooldown being reduced. So basically, you could spam her E twice, meaning that you could get her coil stacks more consistently. The only problem is that you're sacrificing a bunch of stuff. So her uh, energy recharge for 30% is okay if you want to spam her bursts a lot. But you're sacrificing damage, which is what the stringless is. So yeah, 165 elemental mastery, that's pretty good. I mean, you basically get elemental reaction damage bonuses, which is, well, what a DPS needs. And lastly, well, since these two are off the table, since they are both support bows, by nature, this is the only DPS bow that she'll ever use, which is the Rust, which basically increases normal attack damage by 80%, but decreases charge attack damage by 10%, which actually sounds pretty good, because she will never use her charge attack, and she'll only use her normal attacks. The only problem is, she needs coil stacks, and it's not guaranteed. So, yeah, well, you're in a predicament now <laughs> as to which free-to-play bow that you will ever need for Aloy. So you can either run the Stringless but possibly miss out on normal attack damage. You can run the Sack Bow but possibly miss out on damage. Or you can run Rust but possibly miss out on Coil um, consistency or damage on your elemental skill or burst. So either way, you have to sacrifice something if you ever want to run Aloy. So yeah, uh, not really a good position to be in as a DPS, uh, where you need to be picky about your weapons. So yeah, uh, Aloy in general, it, her kit just sucks. But now it is time to go over the options, and you'll see what I mean when I say options. So, what do I mean by options exactly? I mean it in a broader scope. So basically, Aloy's options in general. So basically what you run her over on, or what you run on her teams, or what you replace her with. So yeah, basically options in a broader scope in general. So um, speaking of options, I am going to be talking about what you can run over her and what are her different options on your cryo DPS uh, characters. So yeah, well, here we go. So. Uh, Aloy is a cryo DPS, but there are other options, uh, as you can see there the reason why I put it as a broader scope There are other options that you could run besides her So yeah, let's just talk about them now since Aloy is a five star I'm gonna be comparing her to cryo five stars or five star DPS's in general since that is basically her base kit So without any further ado, let's go so first off, we have the character that is basically the closest thing to her, which is Ganyu, who is a cryo bow. So what does Ganyu do? Uh, well, compared to Aloy, she's actually 10 times better. <laughs> wow, no surprise. <laughs> so her normal attack basically does level 2 uh, charge attack damage, meaning that she does AoE cryo damage. And her kit basically backs this up, since this is basically her main bread and butter. So her elemental skill is a taunt, which basically lets enemies go away from her, meaning that she can do charge attacks more. And she doesn't really need to move uh, her mouse a lot just to deal damage. So yeah, her elemental skill is pretty good at taunting enemies. Her elemental burst is pretty good on cryo damage uh, purposes. And it also has a really good cooldown. Unlike Aloy's, where you have to wait 20 seconds. Here... She basically gets a duration of 15 seconds and a cooldown of 15 seconds. So meaning that it has no cooldown. So immediately when the burst ends, you could use another burst. And the energy cost is not that bad. But it is more than Aloy's though, I will give it that. 
But Celestial Shower is pretty good because the duration and the cooldown is basically irrelevant since she basically has infinite Q. Her talents is also pretty good too. When she's a Frostbite Arrow, she gets crit rate on her Frostbite Arrow, meaning that she'll do more damage, which basically uh, further cements her uh, Cryo DPS uh, standard. And then her passive talent, her other passive talent, where she does Celestial Shower, she gets 20% Cryo damage bonus to active party members, meaning that she is a 10 times better uh, sub DPS than Aloy. Yeah. 20% cryo damage bonus is pretty good compared to Aloy's 8% attack on party members. So yeah, well, a DPS have or this DPS having a better support than Aloy makes you want to think about life. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Ganyu compared to Aloy is uh, way way better, and she is a better cryo DPS than Aloy anyway. So yeah, and besides her constellations is pretty good. C1 basically makes her a monster, so yeah, all you need is C1 and she basically becomes like one of the best cryo DPS's in the game. And her weapons, well, she is pretty flexible since that she is a cryo DPS. So yeah, Amos bow is obviously her best bow, but you can run other bows as well, like the Thundering Pulse or LG of the End if you want to be a little weird. Yeah, uh, Ganyu is pretty flexible compared to Aloy, which... She is only locked to certain weapons. So yeah, there is a comparison on your basically your closest cryo uh, DPS to Aloy because they are both cryo bows. Next up is Ayaka, who is the best cryo DPS in the entire game. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, the only reason why I am showcasing her later on with Ganyu is because Ganyu is actually the closest thing to Aloy, as I mentioned before. And Ayaka is a sword character, not a bow. So yeah, uh, that's why I showcase Ganyu first. So anyways, here is Ayaka's talents. So her normal attack is pretty good. There's a reason why. It's because of this. Yeah. Um, when she does her dash, she basically gets cryo-infused normal damage. Which, doesn't it sound familiar? It is Aloy! Yeah, Aloy does cryo-infused normal damage too! So, yeah, uh, you can probably see where I'm going with this. So yeah, her normal attacks deal a ton of cryo damage, and since it's tied to her dash, she gets it infinitely. Yeah, pretty busted. Her elemental skill is also pretty good too. Her damage is busted. It's pretty basic, but it's busted. And her cooldown is not really a issue since she basically gets infinite cryo damage anyway. This is literally just a burst. Yeah, it's just a burst of damage that you will basically use. Her elemental skill or her elemental burst, which is Kamisato Art Sumetsu, is just a AoE cryo damage dealing um, attack. And it basically lasts 20 seconds. Again, that is the cooldown of Aloy's Q. But there is just one problem. The damage is ridiculous. Yeah, the damage on her elemental burst is absolutely ridiculous. It does way too much damage for its own good. So yeah, um, it does way more damage than Aloy's Q on a higher cooldown. That's what I mean by balancing. As long as it is balanced, it works. Like how Ayaka's burst does a lot of damage, but the only downside is that it has high energy cost and it has high cooldown. So yeah, that actually makes uh, Ayaka pretty balanced. But the fact that she could use cryo damage on basically anything that she ever wants because she gets it infinitely just makes her a way better cryo DPS than Aloy. So why would you ever run Aloy when you can run a cryo character who can basically apply cryo all the time? Yeah, uh, now you get to see the point here. And her talents just bring icing to the cake. Which basically, this increases her normal and charge attack damage. Yeah, it's pretty busted. And then here, you basically get stamina back and you gain cryo damage bonus. Yeah, even though she is pretty selfish, um, basically her talents basically uh, benefit her alone and only her. She basically makes up for it by dealing big, big damage on her attacks. Yeah. Pretty surprising, huh? <laughs> there are other cryo DPSs out there that are better than Aloy! Yeah, really, really surprising. 
how how weird. And also we have another cryo DPS was not a cryo DPS who was better than Aloy, and that's Eula! Yeah, she's a cryo character, remember her? Yeah. The only noteworthy uh thing about why she is a cryo DPS is because of her elemental skill, and that's basically it. And her elemental burst first hit, which basically does cryo damage. Do both of these to cryo damage. But she is mainly a physical DPS. And, well, since it does kind of fit as to if Aloy doesn't get enough stacks, I will be talking about Eula as well. So her normal attacks are pretty basic. It just does 5 attacks. Her elemental skill is pretty good. It does cryo damage. It also decreases cryo res and physical res, meaning that she basically does more damage. And if you hold her E, if you have 3 stacks of a certain um, skill, which is this... Yep, the Grim Hearts. You basically deal um, physical damage, which is pretty good on her. Her also her Q basically uh, does a cryo damage, and it basically puts up a sigil where she does physical damage. Yeah, it's pretty basic in general. And basically, when she uses her Q, her E gets reset, so that you could use another E and get your stacks back. Yeah, Eola sounds pretty basic, but she's actually a pretty good DPS um, compared to Aloy, at least. <laughs> So yeah, a cryo DPS who isn't even a cryo DPS is better than Aloy. How weird. <laughs> yeah, as long, I mean, if they make Aloy like a physical damage dealer, then yes, this actually is pretty good. It's just, it's just like a, uh, the cryo damage is like icing to the cake. But, um, well, Aloy is a cryo DPS, not a physical DPS. So yeah, there is basically your comparison on all the uh, five star cryo uh, options that you have and we did compare her to uh, five stars because well she is a five star herself but now it is time to go over to the four star characters yes there are actually four star characters that are kind of better than Aloy and I will explain why there's only two that pop up so I will be talking about these two so first off is Rosaria yes Rosaria can actually be a DPS <laughs> so yeah, well, the only reason why she becomes a DPS is because of her C6, which basically decreases physical damage by 20%. So she basically discounts, I guess, <laughs> discount Eola, but she does normal damage, her E just does normal cryo damage, her Q basically does cryo damage as well, and she boosts crit rate on uh, allies, meaning that she is a great sub DPS compared to Aloy, who is not. And also, she also gives crit rate to other party members as well, which is pretty good. So, yeah, um, both of these just increase her crit rate. This just increases her crit rate. This basically gives crit rate to other party members. Yeah, she's pretty great uh, sub DPS. She's also a pretty good DPS because of her constellation right here. It's just the cryo damage is just icing on the cake. So yeah, uh, Rosaria is kind of better than Aloy, now that you think about it. <laughs> so yeah, basically she can support and be a DPS, which is pretty, pretty cool. And last but not least, we have the original cryo DPS, which is Chong Yun. Yes, he is actually the first cryo DPS ever made. So yeah, Chong Yun, despite being old, is actually pretty okay. Um, better than Aloy, at least. His normal damage is pretty okay. His elemental skill is what makes him a cryo DPS, where he basically lays a sigil on the ground, and he basically does cryo damage. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, his elemental skill actually benefits a lot of uh, characters like sword, claymores, and pull arms. So basically, anyone can be a cryo DPS as long as he is around. So yeah, characters like Rosaria with Chang Yun is pretty good. Rosari or Chang Yun with Kaya is pretty good. I will be talking about him next, which is the final uh, Quirrell DPS I have to talk about. So yeah, um, his elemental skill is the bee's knees and basically makes him what he is. And the cooldown isn't that bad either. So yeah, pretty good. And his elemental burst is a big, big damage uh, elemental burst. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, each sword basically does 200%. So, yeah, it basically becomes a 3 hit 200%, meaning that it's a net total of 600% on a level 9 talent. Pretty, pretty good. And as you can see here, um, 
If you use the layered frost, you basically get normal attack speed increase, which is pretty good, meaning that you basically deal more damage faster. And this basically decreases cryo res for 10 seconds on characters, which is pretty good! Again, he is a better sub DPS than actual DPSs! But the actual DPS Aloy, it's it's re it's really weird. Why Aloy sucks? It's because there's other characters that are better than her, than her her role. She can't do sub DPS because there are other characters that do sub DPS better, like Rosaria, Changyun, and the next character I'm gonna be talking about, Kaya. Kaya is also a cryo DPS if you want him to be one. He's also a extremely great sub DPS as well, thanks to this. Yeah, his elemental burst duration is 8 seconds, but you can make it last longer thanks to this. Um, right here, I think it's his constellation? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Every time an opponent is defeated, you basically increase the uh, elemental burst by a lot. So yeah. Um, C2 Kaya is what you need to make him a DPS, and he's great at that because his thing lasts forever if you uh, basically run him with a bunch of enemies on the field, which is pretty good. His E also is not that bad either. It does big damage on low cooldown. His normal plax is pretty good too. You can just make him a cryo DPS thanks to Chong Yun. Speaking of Chong Yun, I will go back to him later, but yeah. Um, this basically uh, regenerates HP for him, meaning that he can self-sustain himself. And opponents that are frozen basically gives him elemental particles to use, meaning that you can use his burst more. Yeah, he sounds like a better DPS than Aloy now, does he? <laughs> so yeah, uh, those are all your cryo DPS options there. And back to Chong Yun. So yeah, the reason why I say that Chong Yun is probably a really good uh, cryo uh, support is because of his elemental skill. Remember when I said sword, claymore, and pole arm? What is Aloy's main weapon? It's bow. Meaning that he can't use Chong Yun's E. Meaning that she actually has to rely on her coil stacks. If Chong Yun's E can support bows, characters like Ganyu and Aloy can basically benefit from the normal attacks. But they can't. But, Ganyu makes up for that for having a charge attack that does AoE cryo damage and she could spam it. Aloy doesn't have that. Yeah, Aloy doesn't have that <laughs> because she needs coil stacks to get cryo damage. It is pretty bad. It's just so bad. <laughs> I feel so sorry for her. So, well, now it's time to go over her team options. So, here we go. So, let's say you actually want to run Aloy anyway, despite what I told you. Well, there's really only one team that you could probably run. And that is a team with Aloy, Zhongli, Yelon, and Zhongling. Meaning that you will run a mixed freeze and melt comp. And vaporize. Yeah, it's really, really weird. You can also use animal characters as well to basically uh, gather up enemies and then shoot them. But since Aloy mainly relies on DPS damage, you want off-field characters to support her. So Zhongli is there to basically not make you get hit. Yelan is there, or you can use Xingqiu if you want for, her, for their burst on normal attacks. And then Zhongling is here because of her Q, where she basically does cryo application on her Q. And Guoba's E as well to basically increase her damage. And then, well, Aloy's there for DPS purposes. But that is literally it! That's the only team you'll ever run. Because you could run an animal support, but then again, you could just run anyone else to replace Aloy. You could just run the Ayaka Freeze team if you're ever gonna run Kazuha. Yeah. You will never run Aloy on the Kazuha team. You can also run other um, characters that can decrease cryo res like Ganyu on Aloy. So you can just run both of them. But the only problem is that you would run Ganyu as the main DPS instead. Uh, or you run her as a sub DPS um, if you ever make Aloy a main DPS. But there's no reason to ever do that if Ganyu can just be the main DPS. 
You see what I'm getting here? Aloy is useless at everything. Yeah, she is literally the worst DPS in the entire game. Just because stuff like this just doesn't work for her. While other cryo characters like Ayaka, Ganyu, Kaya, Chungyun, and Rosaria can basically do a lot of things better than her. Aloy. So yeah, uh, well, I did explain everything as to why Aloy sucks, but it's time to actually put everything that I have told you in practice, or else this basically, this whole section, or this, like, every single section in this video would be pointless. So, without any further ado, let's just hop into Spiral Abyss and just showcase her. Alright, so here we are in Spiral Abyss. Well, it's only fair for me to show you my kit, so here we go. Um, here is my Aloy kit. I will mention this, it is not that spectacular. As you can see here, crit rate, crit damage is basically at the bare minimum. Her cryo damage is at the bare minimum too. She's basically just a trophy character at this point, so yeah, um, pretty cool. Her weapon is a stringless, which is at R1, but this is basically more than enough to showcase her damage on her elemental skill and burst. And her normal attack damage would be okay at best because of her stats right here. Of course, she has no constellations, and her talents are 666, meaning that she is minimally built. So yeah, there is my Aloy, uh, <laughs> Aloy talents. And as for artifact set, we have Blizzard Strayer and Wanderer's Trope. Yeah, I had to make a two-piece set for both of these, because this is basically her best set. She does cryo damage, and her elemental mastery is at 80, meaning that she basically, uh, can deal a lot of elemental reaction damage uh, boosts and also benefit her team more. So yeah, well, anyways, there is my uh, build on Aloy and I'm going to be showcasing her right now. So yeah, I'm just going to be abandoning challenge there and I'm just going to be uh, doing this. So uh, I am going to be using the team I mentioned before, which is Zhongli, Yanlan, and Zhongling. And then I'm gonna be just putting Ganyu on the second half because we compared her with Ganyu um, last time. So yeah, here we go. Alright, so in order for her to be showcased at um, her fullest, we're just gonna be putting on this. Yeah, the uh, mental skill uh, cooldown chance of 50%. Yeah, um, this is only if you assume that she is at sack bow. But I'm not going to be doing that anyway, even though I did say I will. But if you are going to be doing this anyway, just do this. But we're just going to be using this because it doesn't benefit her that much. We need to show her on her raw potential. So yeah, here we go. Alright, I'm going to be using every single burst possible so that Aloy can actually deal her damage. So we basically got our four coil stacks. We can just use her burst now and then we can just do... Uh, her cryo damage normal attacks, which do nothing. So yeah, now we have to actually get her uh, burst stacks again. <laughs> and besides, Yelon and Jungling are doing all the damage here, as you can see, thirty thousand. <laughs> and then her elemental skill does five thousand. Yeah, um, Aloy is not really that good. Um, I will wait for um, I will wait for more enemies to spawn so that. Uh, Aloy could do uh, more things. Actually, no, might as well throw out her skill. There we go. We gotta make um, enemies go on the... Uh, see, as you can see, there's mini bombs on the floor. But the enemies are not going towards it. So yeah, that's also another instance as to why um, Aloy can't get her uh, cryo damage. It's because she didn't uh, get enough stacks. There we go, we got four stacks, meaning that we could do cryo damage now. Now she's actually pretty decent, but um, as you can see here in a moment, we're going to be losing it eventually. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now she's up to her wits to use um, her other stuff. So yeah, as you can see there, Aloy, I did say this before, um, she is not that bad, but um, well, you could also see that she is also uh, the worst Cryo DPS compared to all the other Cryo DPSs in the game. So yeah, well, um, yeah, Aloy, I mean, I guess if you build her properly, she's okay, but why would you ever want to run her 
when there are other characters out there that you could run besides her. So yeah, there we go. There is, um... <laughs> There's Aloy in action, as you can see there. She is, uh... She's okay. But, uh... Definitely the worst out of the crowd DPS group. So, yeah. That is Aloy. <laughs> and I am going to be closing out the video. So, here is the conclusion. So, what is my final conclusion on Aloy? She is the worst DPS in the entire game. Yep. <laughs> Who would have thought? Because there are other cryo DPSs out there that are better than her. There are also other DPSs in general who are better than her. And her kit basically goes against her as a cryo DPS. And she also can't be a sub DPS because her kit allows her to be a cryo DPS. And she can't be a support either because her kit needs to make her a DPS. So yeah, uh, everything works against her. She literally has no weapon options, so she is stuck with uh, certain weapons um, that she needs to run. So yeah, um, in conclusion, Aloy sucks in general. But, well, uh, you can not still use her. Again, I do say that if you love the character, use them um, a lot in my videos. So if you love Aloy, if you love uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, then yes, you could just run Aloy if you want. But if you don't care and if you like a meta or you want to use better characters, just don't use Aloy. She's only there as a trophy character. So yeah. In conclusion, she's a trophy character. Just run any other character other than her. And that is it for the Let's Say episode. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed my rant on Aloy. <laughs> but anyways, if you like this uh, Let's Say video, and if you want to see more Let's Say videos in the future, make sure you like the video! Also, if you enjoy the content that you see in this um, channel, make sure to subscribe! Also, turn on the notification bell if you do subscribe to not miss out on a single upload. Who knows when I might be uploading another Let's Say video. And also, comment down below! What do you think of Aloy? You think she's great? You think she's bad? You think my opinions are invalid? You think my opinions are correct? What do you agree or disagree on? Let me know in the comments down below. And well, as always, thank you guys for watching this Aloy Let's Say video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.